All right, guys. Um, looking forward to today's call. It's a real good one, nice and boring, um, as they can be. Um, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite topic and the, the most favorite thing to do inside their contracting business, how to create SOPs, how to actually you know use SOPs that make sense, not have them become paperweights, um, and some cool systems and processes and reasons why we can implement them. So um, first things first, um, from last week, just to kind of um, go back over why we're doing these things, we talked a little bit, actually we talked a lot of it about um, company structure, all right? So creating roles, responsibilities, having KPIs. And what we're going to be talking about today is really the um, the technical part of it, right? So it's one thing to say, hey, you know what, we're going to hire somebody, um, but then we don't have any documentation or any way to support that person. And we don't have any way to hold them accountable besides coming to us and, you know, kind of being a nuisance to everyone around them. And I see this a lot. And I think there's a couple of things at play here. First things first, um, you know, being very clear with their roles and responsibilities up front. And that's cool. We got a role responsibility. All right. But we need to be able to train every single one of those roles, responsibilities, everything that's in that initial document that you guys have shaken hands on needs to really be understood. And we have to have a plan for actually implementing those things. Okay. And what I find most often, what I see most often is that we create job descriptions that may or may not be ours. All right. And then we have a pie in the sky belief that we're going to use these extraordinary people to perform those tasks. And it's just not realistic. Okay. Um, and I could take most people's job descriptions and rip them up and throw them out because they're paperweights. Right. And I know this from my own personal you know, experience. I've tried it many times. So I stopped doing it. Really what I started doing was really thinking of whatever I could actually train becomes the role and responsibility. Okay. I can't ask somebody to do something that can't be clearly defined and measured. If you think about that, that's the exact same principles that SOPs are based on, right? The who, what, where, why, when, all of those questions that somebody would require in order to really own a, a, a task or a responsibility. All right. So um, real quickly, I'm just going to go a little bit back on that lesson here. And I just wanted to bring up some resources that are available for you guys. So inside a school here, all right, there's this, this document. So last week I made a document, an SOP. It was meant to lead into this week. Um, and what was really cool about that is I was able to create this SOP based on my lesson plan that I had ran, right? So all I took was the recording of the call and, you know, I had to make some refinements, but it basically took everything I was saying and broke it down into a procedure. All right. And that's how easy it is to actually create procedures nowadays. So, you know, how many times are we having discussions with team members and, um, you know, having to explain a step by step or, you know, we have we have conversations with, um, you know, meetings about something. And we verbally explain how we want to see something done, but then there's no documentation to it. Right. There's no backup. There's no way for someone to reference back to it. Um, and that's, you know, obviously problematic. Right. That's a that's a good way to have people leaving confused. Um, so what I'm now getting more and more into the habit of doing is kind of taking advantage of ways to create SOPs that aren't like the traditional boring. Like we're just going to you know sit down and write out a, um, a Bible of stuff. OK, so um, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but one way to create an SOP is actually to record your conversation. All right. And then you can use um, a transcript and then ask ChatGBT to actually turn that into a SOP. OK, um, if anybody here is using Loom. All right. If you're using Loom as a as a, a video um, thing, what I'm doing is I shoot the video for what I want to do a step by step tutorial. OK, but then I have Loom actually turn that into a SOP, a document. And then if you want to get really, really sophisticated with it, I can take that over to um, our flowchart um, software and I can ask the AI in there to actually create me a flowchart for that procedure. OK, so again, I think a lot of us avoid this task because it's um, it, it can be it can be kind of daunting when we have to list everything down. Um, my experience with ChatGPT is it's limited. OK, so just keep that in mind, like you have to really know your process first. Um, don't expect ChatGPT to make a like anything tangible or useful um, if you're not giving it the specific details. I find it just organizes the 
the content better than what we would and it's faster, right? So again, um, and in the case of SOPs, in case of policies, what I'm finding more and more, video, really powerful for a, a high percentage of people. But then there's a lot of other people that um, they tend to just want to read. Okay. So that's why I'm pairing those two together and I'm getting a lot more success, a lot more understanding. And the true sign of whether your procedures are working properly is if someone actually uses it. Right. So collecting that feedback, like it doesn't matter. And, and there's more SOPs that are paperweight than there are ones that actually are practical and useful. So we got to get creative on how we actually um, introduce them and how we use them. Okay, so I'm going to again, I'm going to go through a couple of examples today of ways that I've been able to do it, like outside of the traditional kind of written, boring SOP um, that we're probably all used to seeing. Um, we want to think about, and, and today we're going to keep our focus on sort of that sales to production handoff, where a lot of the problems occur, um, job startups, um, you know, job, job reports during the job and like job closeouts. Okay, so out of curiosity, before I get rolling here, how many of you guys have a structured form of job startup, um, mid job closeouts? Do you guys have any checklists, any check and balances, any SOPs um, implemented? No, no. Okay. Um, how many of you guys are struggling with explaining procedures, even technical procedures in your office? So like how to, you know, open a program or how to, you know, do this or do that. Has anybody had that problem yet? Yeah. Okay. Um, you will find that more when you start to, you know, bring in admin and stuff like that. So my first sort of secret weapon with this, and there's two programs that I like a lot. Um, the first one I started out with um, is a product called uh, Tango. All right. And what Tango does, if you bear with me one sec. Um, is it'll capture your screen. Okay, so the things you're doing on your screen, all right, it turns that into a step by step that somebody else can follow um, that essentially gives them like the instructions of what to do. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, now, we use this for finance, we use this for all types of different, you know, different things, right. So I'll just take this one as an example. Um, and we'll click share. I'll throw it in the link too. And Jay, this is very similar to Scribe, is it not? I was just going to mention, I love Scribe too. So I just started okay. using Scribe. Scribe's brand new. Um, it's, yeah. got, it's got basically the same features. This one's like 60 bucks a year. So, okay. I mean, you, you choose, but it does the same thing. So what it's going to do is it's going to capture your computer screen, right? So it's going to follow through with, you know, this is how we create a calendar. This is how we, you know, select this. Very like, again, if we're, if we're delegating to an admin, if we're delegating to someone in the office, like get in the habit of like something you're doing redundantly or doing frequently, just grab one of these programs. Cause all it is, is, is literally a, an attachment up here. Like you can make them in just the same amount of time that it takes you to do the task. Right now we create an SOP out of it. And it's very practical. Like we don't need to think about if that person gets it or doesn't get it, explain it like, you know, and if you paired this with a video, just going through the whole process, um, I found that like, it's, it's almost a hundred percent, right? I work a lot with VAs. I work a lot with, you know, admin type people that, you know, they know how to, like you show them how to do something and they'll just do it. All right. Um, and th these are the kind of things that you can kind of think about when, when implementing, right? So again, Scribe will do something similar to it, but like I said, not a big deal, right? All of a sudden that overwhelming feeling of like, oh, well, shit, I can't do that or I can't do this. It becomes um, a lot easier for us to do it. The other thing it's going to do, um, which I found very surprising myself and um, working with teams and other people is it shows you just how many steps goes into doing something, how many clicks, okay? So me as a system geek and really a you know, trying to make things simpler, easier, faster. Um, this was a big eye opener for me. I have some SOPs in here that are like 120 steps and you step back and you go, how do I make this simpler? Right. The time that it requires, like if you got to really start to break down these things. Like if we could save 13 clicks, like that's four and a half minutes, that's five minutes. And are these things required? Right. Is that software really still doing what I need it to do? 
And again, it's really kind of logically in your brain because what, you know, you might not have been able to live without all of a sudden becomes a burden, right? I noticed that with project management systems. So um, ClickUp and, you know, again, I'm not promoting one or the other, but one of the things with ClickUp as I liked is is an open source that I could make my own processes. And the way I built my processes was counting the number of clicks because I knew that the least amount of clicks that somebody had to take to co complete a assignment or complete a task, um, the more likely they were to do it and the more consistently I w they were to do it. And also anything that I see being done a lot of, I could actually automate, all right? So here's a little inside trick. Um, we have great automation team. If you come to me with one of these processes and go, Jay, like this is too much work and uh, we're blowing a bunch of time. Can you automate this for me? Sure, show me the process, right? You hand this off and we can, we can automate. There's other people that can do it as well, but um, again, we really want to start thinking about how do we, you know, document and then how do we assess, all right? How do we know that the SOP that we're doing makes sense, all right? And if, in my opinion, like the best way to delegate is either automate or delete, okay? So especially in the office, you know, externally, we could all use with simpler systems. We could always make it easier. And I think that, um, again, the tendency, especially when we start out, is to build complicated things, all right? Um, I can be the first to tell you that complicated fails, simple scales, okay? So keep it simple. Things that are complex or complicated, try to automate or delete, all right? If you even track for one day, and you can get click counters as well. This is, again, directed at admin, um, internal office stuff. Um, you can actually get click counters to, to see just how much we're jumping from thing to thing or, or process to process. Um, I know a lot of time we struggle, um, especially I've seen it a lot with a office manager trying to delegate to an admin um, or an owner trying to hire their first admin, not knowing what they want them to do specifically, and then feeling frustrated because they have this person sitting there that requires input and they, they, can't, they can't explain it other than just sitting down and showing them over and over again how to do something, all right? Um, I'm famously bad for having very, very low patience for like showing people how to do things. I click too fast. I think too fast. It just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, and some of you may have experienced the same thing. So this is a, a tool that can help with that. All right. Um, again, if we wanted to go a video format or something that maybe doesn't involve, um, you know, specifically, uh, something in the computer, we can shoot the video and then use the video transcript um, if you're using Loom or anything like that to actually create an SOP, all right? So I'm actually going to um, create an SOP today on doing those things. So I'm going to share share with you guys an example from this call, all right? I, I have one quick question. Sure. Did you say you, if you create like a Loom video, you can uh, have that put in a transcript, transcript format? No, you can have it made in Loom. Loom will make it for you. Oh, from, from, from the steps. Yeah. Maybe. So like, yeah. Okay. So um, it's just a like, and again, I'll give you guys the, um, the, the uh, prompts that I use um, that work for me. Again, there's a million of them out there, but you can shoot a loom video now and you could just ask it to make an SOP. Like I've been making SOPs of all of our, our discussions here. All right. Cause I'm going through a process. Right. So again, before we struggle with making our like, replicating and repeating all of our stuff. Now it's easy. Just shoot a video, right? You go through the steps or use one of the, you know, the the tracking tools. The technical stuff I recommend using a, a program that will actually show them the steps. In a video, we go too fast. Even if we go too slow, like people lose track and it's hard for them to go back and see which step it is. So from a learning um, thing, especially something complicated, um, the best route to go is something like a scribe or a tango. OK, you show them the overall concept in the video, but like that, that next SOP is like super, super valuable. OK, so um, next, let's talk about like practically. All right. How many of you guys think that your your guys will actually read through an SOP? How many how many do you think will actually none? OK, I agree. Um, now, what I've found that the, the hack here is, okay, video, number one, they'll watch the video if you force them, they hate it, but like I can then test them on the knowledge. So I gamify it from that perspective, 
right? So again, we reward, we, you know, we know what they've watched. We, we make sure that we hold them accountable. Again, if they want to raise, they want this or they want that, like, show me, show me the proof that you've done the work as well. Okay. The second part to that is I focus in on checklists. Okay. Checklists again, for whatever reason, um, well, it's, it's probably an obvious reason tend to have a lot more, um, impact and they're much, much easier to implement. So I want to show you guys a couple of examples of checklists that we use and for you guys using company cam. All right. Um, we'll go through this. I, I love the way that company cam has logically thought about how a construction worker or a tradesman would actually, what they would do and what they wouldn't do. All right. So, um, let me give you some examples of what we can do with checklists. All right. So, um, simple things, let's just say a repair. Okay. We want to in here, bear with me. We'll create a checklist, use an existing checklist. Um, we can go through all types of these, these things, but I'm going to shake, hold on. Where did I go on my templates? Sorry. Okay. So you can build pre like predetermined checklists that when a certain job is started, it'll actually create like a checklist that your guys will go through. All right. Um, it can be like assigned to somebody, but in terms of like a, a tool that's really practical for creating these things, I haven't found one that like that comes even close to, you know, what, uh, what company cam will do. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of actually getting the guys to take action on things, the checklist method works a hell of a lot better um, than anything else that we, uh, we've we tried to bring into place. So I don't really recommend um, using SOPs. All right, so like, here's an example of a pre-roof inspection checklist. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Okay. So again, we can use those, you know, they're ask, answering yes, no questions. We have it set up like they have to, like a photo is required. All right. So it's something of a procedure that's more like direct. All right. It's more to the point um, for your guys. And if you have a particular thing that you want. So again, I hear a lot of you guys kind of, you know, discussing like a service call, for example, right? Like what is the process for, you know, inspecting a, you know, an HVAC unit? you could have that checklist set up in here where they have to do all of those things to be able to close out the work order. All right. Um, and it could be a step-by-step -step and then providing the photos. Okay. It won't let them actually close it until a photo has been provided, meaning that they have proved that they've actually, you know, done the, done the thing. I had to go this route with my teams. Um, and again, like I said, over the years, we've refined it down and down and down. Um, but, you know, we still want to kind of keep these things as simple as possible. Um, is there anybody with uh, like a situation where they could see a checklist being valuable or that they're struggling with getting their guys to do something? Huge. Oh. And we're, we're right now, we're putting a lot of them together. We have a lot of them. We're just got to put them into action. Right. So well, the action that. part is that's where I see a lot of the, the confusion coming from. And it's the, our, what we see in our brains as being simple. When it goes to our guys, it's just another thing they have to do and you get the old fuck you, right? So, um, and, and a lot of times they'll say, yeah, yeah, great idea. But how many can honestly say that these things get implemented? We may have, I've, I've, I mean, I've had them situation where I've had the checklist for years, never once got filled out, right? So we really got to think about what's practical and how do we get the team to buy in on these things? Because if it doesn't solve a problem or make their life easier, good luck, right? So, I mean, it was hard enough to get our guys to use company cam at first, but now I can say that the way that we created our SOPs and the way that we made it so easy, all right, n like none of them would go back. Plus we tied their pay to company cam, which was the real like impossible now to get around it. So we took our job clock system and we, in order for them to um, trigger the job clock, we use busy, busy. They have to use company cam. So they have to take a photo that timestamps where they are, and then that starts their clocking. And then they have to take a photo when they clock out. If they miss any of those clocking in, clocking out, 
all right, then it they basically lose that day till the following pay period. So for us, we amalgamated everything into one app. And then from there, again, um, I can have specific things that we are we're using as a procedure. So the the process that I followed that worked is first I train them on the thing, right? The things company cam, all right? The, I, I, I make them understand the consequences and the reasons why they need to use it. And it's very easy. I attach it to something you know they um, wouldn't want to sacrifice. So pay, you know, raises, like you got to figure out what those things are that are the motivating factors, okay? And then from there, basically what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to create the process within within a system, all right? So take something common. So project startups, uh, pre, pre-job inspections, okay? Again, simple, simple as we can get them. But if you weren't doing a pre-inspection or if you weren't having your sales rep do any sort of handoff for projects, what happens? What happens all the time, right? It's just over and over kind of repeat the same process. We miss something, right? It, always missing something. And it really takes, uh, it takes the toll on the morale. It takes the toll on everything else. So um, the other thing we want to be focused on here is speed, all right? If it takes you an hour or two hours to set up all the checklists and build all the paperwork out, is it realistic that our internal staff are actually ever going to use it? Probably not, right? So these things have to be either automated, right? Or again, we got to look at how many steps are involved in our systems. Because like I said, the tendency that I've seen, including myself, I'm not excluded, is we start off with a great idea of how we can fix something. But then we just make it way too complicated and unpractical and it never, ever gets implemented. And then we're frustrated because we've done all this work. We've taken all these steps. We begged, we pleaded, we've we've bribed and nobody's done it. All right. Um, so, again, we got to really come back to the drawing board and understand that, hey, you know what? We're not going to get anybody to really read anything. So company manuals, traditional company manuals, SOPs, those kind of things are out. Right. Don't even bother. Don't waste your time. All right. For the field. Okay. Now with the exception, electricians and like um, HVAC mechanics with like technical specs and stuff like that, there's obviously, you know, I'm not saying get rid of all those, but even those can be um, taken and really um, boiled down. Right. So in, uh, in company camp, for example, I'm just using it as an example. There's other, other systems, of course, but you can take, um, you know, you can take an installation instruction, you know, troubleshooting guide, you can use ChatGPT to break it down to the simplest steps, all right, and then use photos of jobs that you've done and completed, all right, and put them right in the checklist. So if they got to the job and they had to do a, you know, um, an HVAC service thing, you're basically going to have your own sort of procedure to go with it with your own photos, and they can be made any way. You could take an old job like that you have the photos set up on. And then by doing that, it will show them what photos they need to take at what, like what positions. And we found that that with a technician, it makes them, their service call go more smoothly, right? Again, instead of going back to a, a, a manufacturer's installation guides or like trying to find those things, um, they have it right there. And you can just make these things on the fly as you go, right? Now, the next service guy that comes in has this whole library of checklists and ways to actually do the job, okay? We've been very successful um, at J. Carter Roofing, and this is what I mean. Um, I maybe I've explained it to you guys a couple of times. We started to build our culture around what we call SOPs, but they're not really. They're checks and ba- balances, okay? So again, I, can, I think I've shared this story a few times about you know a couple of times when we've made big mistakes, especially we ha- one that stands out to me that was very expensive, a siding mistake. We had two crews start on one job, one crew cut their corners one way and cut their, you know, their, their J trims one way. The other crew did them, you know, a totally different way. By the time we got around to the house, we have half the house done one way, half the house done the other. And it's, it's about a $20,000 mistake, right? So, you know, instead of getting mad about the situation, I just went out and literally put it on everybody there. And I said, okay, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to fix this, but you're going to tell me. All right. So I don't care if the mistake happens once, 
that's the cost of doing business, but I'll be goddamned if it happens again. So you tell me how we're going to fix this. You, you take accountability of who was responsible for it. And you provide me with the documents of how this will never, ever happen again. Right. Cause it's stupid. How do you, how do you miss that? Right. So the answer and the solution to that was they just did what we had already set up. So they started doing checklists that way. Another crew that never even met that crew knows how Jay Carter roofing does corners knows how they do sides and it's all in a checklist document right so again these are these are simple things that we can implement and they can go they can become more complex so my in particular um our pre-roof inspection we have 143 um things on that checklist all right and again their conditions if this happens do this if that happens do this all right they can be conditionally logic so conditional logic is I want to make it so easy, a like a three-year-old could do it, right? And I literally, that's the way I think. Like, no matter what I see, I'm like, I, like once I do it, I have like somebody that is um, unrelated to me, like doesn't know the process. I mean, it's even better if they're outside the company. Here, go do this, all right? And before I tried to bring it to the guys, and here's the reason why. And a lot of companies, how many of you, you guys out there have struggled, tried to do things with the guys, it didn't work out, and now you have a resistance to change, right? Where they're like, I don't want to do that. We've already tried that shit. We Like, I'm not doing more, all right? It happens. So what we have to do is we have to think about it as like a our own scorecard, right? If we don't have any credit because we've blown many implementations, okay, then it's time to get serious because if they do start to buy in, and there's problems and there's there's kinks and stuff that's on you all right so the best thing to do is find somebody that is you know um at arm's length or like away from the process that isn't going to affect morale or anything like that or opinion or politics all right get them to run the procedure for you okay i've gone as far as having my 12 year old niece you know run the process for me here try it because we can get in our heads about these things and again, like I said, because we know it so well, it's simple, right? How could you not understand this? Why don't you get this? Like I've shown you, all right? But what's simple to you is not simple to others who haven't seen it, right? I have this problem with clients. So you guys, you, you often see me using checklists and stuff like that. Like I have the same, the same issue, right? So I'm constantly trying to think, okay, like if somebody didn't get it, it's not their fault they didn't get it. It's my fault. And it means that I have to work harder on making that process simpler, right? That means taking things out, removing things, being conscious of the time it would require. All of these things are how you create an actual procedure that works, okay? And then the other big thing is think about the changes that you're going to make and make your guys that are running the process think it's their idea to make the change. Don't ever change it yourself. Once you've put it in place, all right, that becomes hands off for you. All right. As the owner, as the authority. All right. And I'll tell you why. Okay. If you want somebody to own it. All right. And you want somebody to actually be accountable to it. All right. We can't be changing it and, you know, messing with it all the time. We got to get them to come to us or we got to have a conversation with them where we get them to think that the change is their idea. Okay. It's like reverse psychology. It's, it's not complicated, but we make the mistake of going and trying to put out a fire. Oh, we'll just add this to the checklist. Oh, we'll just do this and do that. Do you want to have your guys buy out very quickly? Right? That becomes a demand in their eyes and something else they have to do that's nothing to do with them. Right? Then they just will stop. Okay? So the rules of the game is if you're going to bring it, you get their feedback, all right? Any SOP, any procedure is with the field, okay? Is we got to we got to really think about team sport here. First of all, feedback Having a meeting with them, Zoom, I recommend because you can get the transcript. What's the problem? What's the issue? Okay. Who's accountable? Who's responsible? What do we do to make the change? What process do we need to get into place? These are all key catchwords that then we can draft an SOP for how to resolve it. All right. We can use, you know, ChatGPT and other things to simplify, boil it down. All right. Then get your guys to buy in on it, make changes to it, give their opinions, like add things to it, take things away from it. All right. Because now it's become all of our, our solution, not just one person. 
Okay. One person, it's very hard for any one person to get a whole procedure, right? I'm just saying, and nobody wants to write them. Nobody actually like wants to do them. So make it a team sport at that point. All right. We're going to assign somebody that's responsible for the, the SOP for the checklist, the keeper. Okay. A lead hand, um, a foreman, somebody on, you know, on the, on the production side. Okay. And they're going to come to you and you're going to have conversations with them, whether it worked or not. And we're going to measure the success of that. Okay. The real buy-in comes when you can successfully say to your team, we resolved this problem. All right. And they can see that process and it clicks And like, I mean, again, I hope you guys get to experience it, but like the best part is they believe it was their idea. Like you didn't have it planned for them to, you know, follow through with this. And if you can play that role, they will start to do it organically. And that's when you really start to see these little screw ups becoming, you know, actual processes in your business. All right. So I think a lot of times, um, you know, what happens is we're caught up on creating these things on our own and we're caught up like putting it all on our plate. Um, even management does the same thing. They don't make it interactive enough. They don't make it involved enough for, um, their teams to actually buy in on it. And therefore, like it just becomes more work and more stuff. Okay. The second part to this is the measurement side of it. We, we always have to make sure that we have an ability and that we, we have the discipline to come back and review that process that we've implemented. Okay. I can't, you know, here's the secret sauce to it. An SOP that's just set, set and forget. All right. Over time, it becomes irrelevant. All right. It, it gets outdated. People stop using it. And the problem with it as well is that um, we're not re we're not reminding people of the purpose of it. And people can start to fall out of their routine or out of their habits and stop using them. All right. So I've seen that a lot. So we do we do on an average um, if we've implemented a new SOP, we're going to do 90 days for a year. All right. And then we move it to semi annually after that. Right. So every 90 days, there's a full review of that SOP. Um, I always, again, if the good thing about using a system like company cam and stuff is you can measure how many times it's been used, simple KPIs. Is it being used? You know, how many, you know, how many incidents has been reduced? How many, you know, callbacks have, have been lowered? All of these things, again, will tell you whether you're going the right direction or not. Okay. More importantly, it allows you to you know, pat your production manager on the head and go great job allows you to high five the team and say, you guys did it. All right. You guys are so smart. So, you know, again, they buy into it. They work, they work the system and you've basically told showing them how to solve their own problems. Okay. Does that make any sense? Anybody have any questions so far in terms of what we're, we're discussing here? No, it sounds good. Okay. Um, so I do, I, guess, I do. Oops, sorry. Yeah. I do have one question. Yeah, absolutely. When you said, um, you know, once a, a process isn't changed, it becomes static and overlooked. I mm -hmm. mean, but I, I would, I'm glad you said that because it, what doesn't make sense to me, I'm thinking it would become ingrained and habitual. You, you would, right? So here's what happens. Um, so, and, and I'm going to, it leads into the next part of this about how onboarding is important to all of these things. So I have sort of a, a rule of thumb is until a SOP has been implemented and I can see a consistency over a 90 day, 120 day period. I don't, I don't train it. Okay. I don't bring it. Like I don't, um, I don't push it into my onboarding. I don't make it like the actual standard. It's, it's still proving itself. Okay. Because I have seen over and over again um, where at first there's that novelty. Oh yeah, this is a great idea. Blah, blah, blah. And like, especially my guys, like we've got probably a hundred that didn't work. You know what I mean? Until we got the one, but ultimately over time, what would, what, what begins to happen is like the, the good ones will rise and the bad ones will fall. Okay. So that's where, yeah, you can't like, it doesn't get ingrained. All right. Cause there is bad processes or bad procedures. Like I said, there's just, it can be the words inside of it. It needs to be looked at and go, okay, why isn't this working? But we gotta, we gotta understand that it's the result that we're looking for. So if it's, for example, I want to reduce callbacks. OK, there may be 100 ideas on how to reduce your callbacks, right? There could be and, and the variations of your job. OK, and like I said, as you get your team to do them and because they don't take much time to create. All right. They like anybody can create one. Some of them are going to work and some of them are not. So, 
you know, we have to, we have to toss out the ones that's why you're doing the reviews is important because you may see it in your system going, Hey, I got a checklist for how to install a door. Nobody's used it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was created. It may work, but like nobody's used it because nobody needs it. So what, like, are we going to train that at onboarding saying, this is what we do? No. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question a bit? Okay. So um, in terms of like form and function, okay, so one of the things that uh, I've discovered, especially in business is, you know, at the core of it, it all comes down to form follows function, okay? So, and what I mean by this is like, most owners have the big idea of how the business should run and how the bolts should move and like everything else should should be operating, um, but they miss the function part, okay? So like, if I had to say it in the clearest way possible, it's like most most documents, most procedures, they don't need to exist. All right. So like, do you need to, t do you need a, a full procedure manual on somebody in um, putting on a harness and a tool belt at the same time? Probably not. Okay. There's, there, there's a point to this, right. Is like, again, we, we, we sometimes overdo it and we overthink it. Right. Um, in a good example, like our, our toolbox talks, right? Most of our toolbox talks cover safety things, right? They cover certain elements of what we would consider an SOP. All right. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to create a whole program or a training course on how to put on their fucking tools. All right. I'm not going to make that a standard procedure and waste my time on that. So we have to think like less is more. All right. So what are the biggest things that are a liability or risk to the company? Number one, we should always start when we're considering doing in-field ones, risk, liability, and efficiency. If you can think that way and make the least amount like as possible, all right, you're going to get a lot more um, out of them. All right. And then what we do from that point is get your guys to add the details to it. Okay. Get your guys to add the, the, the extensions to it, the reiterations of it. All right. So a good example is, um, I actually seen this and I was looking for the the photo of it, but um, I have a, a mentor that what he did is basically he gave an SOP with why and what and handed it to his team. And by the time he got it back, so he has a, a huge uh, coaching company, has like a whole bunch of things. By the time he got it back, it was 16 pages long, right? And if you think about your your own company and your own situation, right? how many of your guys have like information that they can add to these things, right? Information that maybe you don't have. When was the last time you guys installed a, a door, right? Could things have changed, right? Does this make sense? So electricians as well. So the other place that we really want to be focused on is transfer of information. Okay. So um, again, I don't think many companies have a good strategy when a lead technician leaves their company to transfer the information that he was holding onto the new predecessor, or the new person that's coming in to replace them. Okay. And I think if you leave it to the point where he tells you he's leaving, you've really done a disservice to yourself. All right. So um, again, one of the, one of the, the processes you want to start to get into and the habit you want to get into is anybody that, and we talked about this last week, that is an extraordinary person in your business is also a major liability. Okay. Meaning if they were to leave, they're taking an enormous amount of like um, information with them. Okay. An enormous amount of um, experience, you know, client information, all of these things. Okay. So this is really what we want to be reducing our liability on each and every single day. Well, how do you do that? How did like, do you just walk around recording them or like, how do you do that? Well, I'll tell you the first step is anybody he's mentoring. So if you brought somebody in as a senior and they are teaching somebody below them, I don't let them teach them one-to-one -one and just explain. I, I make them documented. I make them show me first. If we're going to be doing a lesson and you told me that our, our task today were to teach the apprentice how to do X, Y, and Z, no problem. Cool. Here's what I want you to do though. Like you're going to, you're going to record it or you're going to take pictures of your steps so that we have a way for the apprentice to go back to it and review it so that I know that it's implemented. And again, you make that your policy, all right? Not to make the policy and a procedure, but that a policy and procedure gets made when we do these things. All right. So again, 
what am I doing there? I'm actually, I'm actually mitigating my risk. All right. I'm, I'm forcing a transfer of information and I'm forcing it to be documented. Okay. So now a lot of you guys might get some huge pushback from that. All right. I certainly did. There's a way to work with this. So again, it's, it's about how you set your core values in the beginning when you're bringing people on. So, you know, is information and training and openness a value of yours, right? Have you made it clear in the job description that that's their responsibility? Anybody thought about that? So here's something that, that might be useful for you guys. In every single job description I have, writing SOPs is a role and responsibility and they can be fired for not doing it. Technically, I have it in their contract, okay? So that's how serious I've gotten about it. Um, that's how how important it is to me because at every point I have risk and liability to control, all right. And somebody having all of the knowledge and not you know us not being able to replace that person if they choose to move on, that's a that's a that's a big big problem, right? So to reduce that, I'm making it a part of their role and responsibility that I can address it early, I can address it frequently, I can hold them accountable. And if I need to, I will remove that person from the role because they can't perform the duty or the task, period and full stop, okay? You guys have to really look for this in anybody that you're hiring in a senior level or in a management level, all right? And again, good people have no problem with this. It makes sense. You're not doing anything bad. Bad people will. All right. Bad people are people looking to do harm to your business or selfish or all those kind of things. Like, again, why would you why would you knowingly put the business that's paying you a paycheck at risk? You got to ask the question, why was this person refusing to do this? Right. So, again, I've gotten into that habit and even down to the laborers. Um, again, it's in their contract. All right. Now, do the laborers make SOPs or no? I bet you, I bet you I have one that's done one, like they might have some feedback, but really it's it, it the, the idea is that as I have people and I want people to move up my ladder, all right, I want the laborer to become the lead and I want the lead to become the, I have to set these precedents early and I have to enforce them. Okay. So now let's answer on the same process here in the same thought wave, like what's in it for the owner? Like what is in it for you guys by doing this work and putting this kind of infrastructure in place? What's in it for you guys besides the Con reduced risk? What's that? I said protection. Yeah. Um. Actually, it, it, very good. Yes, it's asset protection, but it's actually they're building equity and turning a risk into a um or a liability into an asset. Okay. So think about it this way. If every process in your business was well documented and you could perform, you could have a monkey perform the task. All right, is your business worth more or less than the one that can't? More. Right. Absolutely, it's turnkey. If you can hand over the keys to a contractor, uh, and, and and that's what I want to see from everybody here. Okay, and it's possible. Like that's where that's where we're going towards this now. The good news is for all of you guys here, it will take 25 years for every contractor to figure this out, all right? Yeah. That it is so easy. It's actually easier now to create these things if we're looking at doing it the right way. So we have to first be very smart about the leadership side of it. So how do we bring this in? You know, how do we encourage and reward people for doing it? How do we have the conversation without raising sales resistance, dare I say, and get them to buy into it? And then what's the tool that we're going to use that makes it very simple for them to actually do it, okay? So if you guys wanted a, a small challenge for, for today and wanted to get some benefit and take some action, all right, the easiest thing to do, all right, is start off with creating a procedure yourself, all right? Record a step-by-step, a, a -step, all right, and take that transcript and turn that into an SOP. I'm going to be giving you guys a document with the... Um, the exact steps from this call, all right, as well as the procedure from this call, all right? And I want you to first get into the habit of creating them yourself, okay? You can't ask somebody to do something you haven't done yourself, all right? After that, it can be delegated, okay? It can be trained, it can be passed off, but until you've seen it firsthand and you've done it and performed it, it's very difficult to try and do it. And what we want to tend to do is just um, lead with bad information and then it's not gonna it's not going to fly. Okay. 
the second thing that I would you know, recommend that you guys do is I'm going to give you guys a list of tools that I've used and that I've, that I, that I've gotten uh, results from. I want you guys to kind of have a peek at those, see if that's something um, that would be useful and practical to you. And then I'm going to give you guys a bunch of goodies like checklists and stuff for, um, for jobs. Yeah. So um, another way that I do um, help out a lot with my guys is they will, they will be given a, checklist of my checklist essentially that uh, I use but I'll 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 make sure it's passed off to the foreman to be the hero on it and come up with the ideas or I'll give it to you know the lead hand and be like hey I want you to help out in this conversation here's the here's the base right here's where you can start okay um when we're doing onboarding okay Again, once we've captured these things, you've proven over a 90 day period that it works, you've got buy in, you've got you've measured the result that then becomes directly inserted into your into your onboarding process. OK, so that every every person that comes in now learns that exact process. And this is the beauty. This is when it really starts to pay off massively is now all of your new staff are being trained standard across the board. OK, and think about that. What does that allow us to do? allows us to scale, allows us to grow, it allows us to increase the, you know, the equity in the business, right? So it turns them into know, A players because they're empowered. Totally. And it takes, again, you just got to think about it this way. Even your best A players have bad days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we have these, like, if we have these checks and balances, and again, like I said, I could never in my life imagine remembering 143 things that we do every time we start a job. There's just no way. There's no possibility of it. But I've made it so easy that, again, somebody who's never, ever worked for us can come in and, you know, perform that thing for them because it's self-explanatory, right? It walk walks them through it. It has descriptions. Okay. So in itself, the SOP is the tool. All right. So that's the big, that's where we want to work to is you're building a system that actually becomes the tool. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Especially for like, again, operational things, those little annoying things that just keep happening over and over again. Like this is how you correct it. And once everyone's agreed that that's the best process or best method, now it's enforceable and you can bring accountability to the table. All right. The best, the best, uh, the best one is when they know that they screwed up and they tell you up front. Yeah, I didn't follow the checklist. Okay, why? You know what I mean? Like why? The, again. So, and if that happens enough, then we know that we have to make a change, right? And they know. So like the best accountability is the one that you don't even have to say anything, right? If they'd followed the checklist. So again, um, I hope some of this stuff is, is actually practical for implementation. Um, if you guys wanna have deeper conversations on it and see better and more examples, I'm going to share them uh, with you guys, um, but super powerful. And again, if you guys start just, again, taking imperfect action today, all right, they will accumulate very, very quickly. And like I said, there's huge, huge value for them in the in the market. And if you ever consider selling, this is what they're coming in and look for, right? Can the owner be removed from the business? Can the business function without the owner? All right. Um, and what is the likelihood of the business surviving and thriving without them actually being there, right? So the idea here, we want to systemize all the way up internally, externally, like all of it can be, can be systemized. So um, as we wrap up here, I want to do, um, I have one last thing I think I'm going to share. Um, how many of you guys own an Apple phone? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever read the owner's manual for it? No. No. Did you know they don't even have one? <laughs> That's why we haven't read it. <laughs> right. Right. So think about that concept for a second. Like you got an extremely complicated piece of technology in your hand with no owner's manual, no explanation. I mean, maybe you can go online and Google some things, but like the point is they didn't need one. They made it so simple that you don't need an owner's manual. You didn't need and people could just pick it up and start using it. Grandma's using an iPhone, right? Yeah. So think about our businesses the same way. Think about our processes the same way. Simple scales, complicated fails. If we have too many steps or one person that like is the bottleneck, we got to look at removing that and making it easier. And again, it can be hard sometimes as an owner because 
we 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 think about things a little bit you know we we overthink things and overanalyze things too much um but when it comes down to the level of like what would you rather like a simple six you know six uh task checklist or do you want this three part like procedure of holding people accountability with people like what makes more sense to you right do you want an extra manager or these checklists right so ultimately you have to decide and it's it's a great time um especially right now to kind of take a look at what we could do and improve um and for onboarding purposes training like these are the things you're going to include in those onboarding programs these are the things you're going to include um that you can start to standardize and you know bring to everybody that w starts work with you cool um Okay. Any uh, any questions that I haven't uh, I haven't answered just yet? Anybody have any questions? Rather, no. Okay. Um, Can I I'm just gonna... comment though? Sure. As you were talking, I was a little bit triggered by scenarios from past experiences, and I was like, "That solves that problem. That solves <laughs> that problem." That so it was kind of annoying. <laughs> I think all owners see the same things, right? We're all plagued with the same stuff. Like it goes on for years too. We're tormented by it. And then we, we start the process of fixing it and then it gets dropped. And like, and then we, you know, mm -hmm. we, how many of you worked like a whole weekend to get something fixed? And then by Monday, you're like, oh, like, you know, you go to hand it off to the guys and they just it, it, over one head and out the other. I can't like, I've done it with clients. I've done it like it's. It, it's it is a skill to do these things but i've gotten to the point now where like i'm taking the the incompetent approach all right is that i don't know the answer to the problem in fact i'm not even smart enough to solve it i need your help i need you to help me solve the problem all right and again when you get to the stage where you can be extremely incompetent within your business you're making it all right we should all be working to become the least important most important person there and you get a lot more results by actually playing that playing that role. Now, again, some of us are, you know, in that stage where we can do that. Some of us are not. We still all have to be on the same page. Like processes and procedures and systems is ultimately what's going to, you know, make our business make make it or not, right? Um, at the end of the day, everything else can be, you know, everything else can be um adjusted and added but you know without these things we just the operation just is too much right and we stay stuck in the business okay so the last thing i'm going to show you guys is just that chart of accountability maybe one second here I get into school. So where would you place, like, I know SOPs are absolutely important. I'm super on board with them. I love them myself. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm thinking of time management and priorities and tasks, right? Yep. So if I've perfect world scenario here, Oh. I don't know how I want to word it, but I don't want to take away from my $40 an hour technician who could and should be working on something for a client, but yet we need the SOP to pull it out of his brain. So like, how do you mitigate that time use? And also he might not be tech savvy. Yeah. So it, it okay. So the first question I would ask is, does he have a Facebook account? I don't think so. Maybe. Okay. Um, so as soon as somebody owns a Facebook account, in my eyes, um, they have no excuses. Okay. So if they've been on Facebook or they've used Instagram or they've ever posted a photo there. Okay. And this is how you call out the bullshit too. Right. So not being tech savvy. Mm -hmm. I've, I don't listen to that anymore. Right. I give them no excuse. Right. Um, here's, here's my approach to it. If they can take a picture Okay. Mm -hmm. And if they can press the dictate thing on their phone, so like they can talk into a mic, like they have that, then they're accountable and responsible to creating an SOP. And it's as simple as this, right? We've got a photo, we can add a voicemail note to it and we can send it away. If you've got company cam, even better, right? You can dictate into company cam. You can like talk. You don't have to like write it out or anything. Just tell me what you did. Tell me the steps. And then I can mm -hmm. take that and I can use chat GBT to 
organize mm -hmm. those thoughts into an actual procedure. And now I'm going to use the photos he's showing me. All right. And mm -hmm. again, you, this is a non-technical thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're even non-technical, you can turn that whole thing in now to a procedure and then a checklist. What, what, Perfect. So I can work with him hand in hand. hundred percent. And then yeah. in terms of delivering it to the rest of the team, um, I'll just give you guys kind of a quick um, thing. So everybody that's um, using our, our stuff, um, we've implemented like school communities. All right. And everyone has one that you can create what I'm, what I'm going to suggest and what I've started doing and I'll um, update you guys on is when you want to drop a training or drop a lesson plan, all right, we can have a community where everybody's in it and it all automatically goes out to them. So it'd be like the short video or here's the process, here's the procedure. All right. For more things that need to be um, like, you need to make sure that they understood it. Um, obviously the onboarding system where they would have to log in, but you can give them updates, right? And then you can follow up with them to make sure they do their training and make sure they pass the test, make sure they understand it, make sure that they've had a buddy or whoever follow up and make sure that they can actually do the thing, right? That's what I'm, mm -hmm. that's what our company's doing now. And again, it's, uh, I don't, you know, obviously I don't create these things anymore, right? So it works. And, you know, I want you guys to take advantage of it and really think about your time. Like, should you be creating all these things? No, it's, it's an overwhelming task, mm -hmm. right? When you think of all the things that need to be done. So it doesn't have to be right. Like take one step at a time. It's really the procedure on how to create procedures. That's the part that you're accountable for. That's the part you need to be thoughtful of. And again, the, the, the way it's explained and delivered that's where that's where the magic is. If you can get somebody else to build the asset in your business, perfect. It serves them. It makes their lives easier. All right. They become more involved and more engaged. It's a win-win for everybody. All right. And anyone resistant to it, again, you have to ask the deeper questions of why, right? So like, you know, especially when we're hiring leadership and, you know, leader that's got to be a part of their job description, that that's their responsibility. So lead technicians, Sue, put it right in their job description now in their contract. And if they, you know, again, you got to be prepared to stand by that, right? If they're not willing to document what they're doing, then, you know, especially if we totally. make it so easy. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so I keep saying it and I'm going to actually do it. Let me just pull this stupid thing up. Um, I put it in a couple places in school. Here it is. All right, I'll have to send it to you guys. I've, I've got it. It's just locked for some reason. So I'll send it to you guys with the follow-up to this. Okay, so hopefully everyone got value today. I appreciate everybody's time, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thanks, guys.